dear attendees uh, next we are we are moving on to uh, raichal uh, presenter from public health like uh, in a topic of higher uh, readability levels and optimal design of medicine information leaflets in attrition based on based combination therapy anti malarial packages a consequence for over the counter medicines use i request um, mr rachel to uh, unmute and start the video can share Thank your you presentation much. thanks for your uh, yeah we can view and your presentation is visible can you please uh, as a uh, presenter like, thank you so uh, much yeah my name is rachel uh bonus titles i have quotes on this uh, paper uh, Professor Margaret Olubumi Akolabi and uh, Omoni Joseph Olaolon. We are from the Department of Clinical Pharmacy and Pharmacy Administration from the Faculty of Pharmacy of Afemi Awolowo University, Ileife. The title of this article is Higher Readability Levels and Suboptimal Design of Medicine Information Leaflets in Medicine is combination therapies, anti-malaria packages uh, as a consequence for over-the-counter medicine use. As Mr. a background, medicine information Mr. leaflets. Hello. Uh, Hello. Miss Rachel, sorry to disturb. Can you please make it as slideshow so that attendees can view your slide clearly? Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Medicine information leaflets are placed in medicine packages and they are used to be, provide information for medicine users uh, so that they can medicate safely and effectively. And malaria in Nigeria and South uh, West Africa is a big issue with high adverse effects for children and pregnant women. I remember a presenter earlier mentioned that. And um, atemisinin-based combination to, therapies, the, the anti-malaria that the WHO, the World Health Organization has recommended for the treatment of um, malaria. And they are available as over-the-counter uh, medicines in pharmacies and in medicine stores. When we're talking about reliability, we're talking about the level of ease or difficulty a text material poses to the user. Are they able to read it and understand it? And another aspect of readability, apart from reading and understanding it, is the issue of the text, the way it is presented, font size, colors, and all that, that makes it attractive for the reader to want to continue reading. Um, level of literacy uh, in, is very key when it comes to how medicine information uh, leaflets are designed so that the averagely literate person should be able to understand, read it and understand it. And for Nigeria, the basic level of education uh, corresponds to the ninth grade we have in developing countries, especially the USA. Now, when we're talking about the usability formula to test how a text uh, passage and predict who uh, can read it in terms of their reading grade, now, the big problem I'm trying to look at in this study is the issue of inappropriate readability levels. And that has been an issue globally in most texts that are placed in the public overview. And the, for medicine information leaflet, knowing what medicines are, and that it's necessary that people who use medicines are able to use it in a way that does not pose any uh, harm to them, does not increase any risk, it, it could be, uh, they could use that medicine such that they get the needed benefit from it and not harm. So unnecessary risk could be avoided when the information placed in medicine information leaflets are what people who use them can read and understand. So it's important then that we are able to uh, establish the reading grade level of uh, medicine information leaflets. One of the key reasons is because um, the anti-malaria we are talking about here, the ACTs, they are placed as over-the-counter medicines. That means that people don't 
have to get a prescription to use them. They can walk into a medicine store, a pharmacy to purchase them for use. And it's, uh, so it's important that the information they are getting from the medicine information effect is what they can read and understand. So the study aims uh, to determine the level of readability of this messy information reflect and to assess the design layouts. Uh, the methodology, uh, this cross-sectional study uh, was adopted for this study and using secondary data, um, 32 different brands of the ECTs, we evaluated for their readability issues and a checklist was designed to point out all these uh, elements of readability from, from the text. So the selected tests were subjected to the flesh uh, uh for readability formula. And the flesh readability formula is quite one of the popular readability formulas used worldwide. There are other types, the gun in faults and uh, different types. But why I'm using flesh kinkade is because it has more variables to look at than others, and it's widely popular and easy to use. And then the second tool I used for in this uh, study is the reliable leaflet design. And it's an assessment to use to assess how leaflets are designed. And then in analysis, I use the uh, SPSS version 16. And this uh, work is a part of my master's uh, work in the Department of Clinical Pharmacy and Pharmacy Administration. And now the flesh case score, this is a formula uh, of the flesh case score. The ASL means the average sentence length, and it comprises of two variables, that the total number of words in a selected passage, and then the total number of sentences in that selected uh, passage. And then the second uh, abbreviation we can find in the formula is the average syllable per word. It composed of two uh, uh, elements, two total number of syllables, and then the total number of words. We find that from many readability uh, literature, the pointers for uh, difficulty or ease of a test are three major things. The length of the, uh, the passage, the, uh, the number of words in that selected passage, the number of sentences in that passage, and the total number of syllables in that passage, those are predictors of difficulty or ease of a, uh, read, read, uh, of a text. Now, for to do the, the um, ability score using the first flesh kinkade formula, each of the reflects that was um, selected a, a portion of it containing about a hundred words was selected. Then we made a, I made a count of the number of words in that passage. Then the number of sentences also we were co counted and then the number of syllables in the passage. And each of those uh, elements were put in the uh, formula and the score obtained from the calculation determines the reading grade level. For the flesh, uh, the bowel uh, assessment tool, um, the tool consists of a checklist uh, that has a lot of elements, the length of the lines of statements of the sentences, the distance between the lines. You know, we are here we're talking about the design of the leaflet. So the distance between lines, whether the lines are justified or not, the type of typeface used, the font size, are they small or not? And then the particular, font size even less than nine uh, is what the bowel assessment to advocates uh, for recommends. Then identification of uh, the uh, identification of the first line, the title case, is it in bold? Is it clearly coming out? Is it obvious? The, uh, is it in italics? The words, are they positively, uh, are they positively rendered? The hand headings, the, uh, the numbers, are they in Arabic numerals? The text, are they boxed? Are there pictures used? Uh, what is the proportion of the white space? Uh, and then the paper quality used, the transparency such that when you are reading at the front page, you are seeing reflections of the back 
uh, print. So, and, and those are the each, uh, elements in the bowel assessment tool. And for each of the elements, their scores are assigned and the scores range from zero to three. In some of the elements, just zero and one. And then some elements is yes or no, where yes carries one and no carries zero. Then the total of uh, points obtainable from the use of the bulb assessment tool is 32. That's the highest points that the leaflet can uh, obtain. But the cutoff point for us to say that this leaflet is for good design or not is 25, not just uh, 16, which is the uh, half of the mark of the tip of the mark. No, 25 is the cutoff point for a leaflet of good design. Then the results from the flesh kinkage result, uh, we'll find out that the the ML the for all the MLLs, the average score was 14.22. And the highest score, which was recorded for one of the ACT, was 24.15. And the lowest score was recorded for a particular ACT, which was uh, 6, 6.07. This gives a range of 18.08 uh, 18, 18 scores. For each of these scores that we have, uh, obtained, there is a flesh kinkade uh, table where the scores are aligned to the readability uh, level, the grade level. And from the assessment of all the scores, um, the result shows that 15.63% of all the MILs were readable at the college of graduate level. 28.13% were readable at the college of the undergraduate level while 37.5 of the MILs were readable at the secondary school, uh, senior secondary school level, while 18.76 of the MILs are readable at the junior secondary school or primary school level. And this is significant last um, uh, value because the level of education, the average level of education in Nigeria is the junior secondary school. Everybody is, is expected to go to uh, use at least nine years of both primary and junior secondary, uh, secondary school. That is the average level of education acceptable in Nigeria. So it means that only 18.76 of the MILs are readable at the junior secondary school level. Um, the analysis of the variance between categories of the uh, formulations show that there isn't much significance. We see the uh, p-value here is 0 0.39, and you know we usually fix the significance of p at 0 0.05. And the groups we are talking about are the uh, pediatric form the pediatric formulations and the adult formulations. So we found that the, there was no big difference in their. You uh, can't say that one was better written. Uh, than the other. For the bulk assessment, um, most of the scores lied between 10 and 19. And the average score was, that was completed was 13.38, and the model was 13. Um, from all the MIL, MIL 15.63% of the MILs recorded above average scores. But that doesn't mean that they didn't meet the 25 uh, score, the 25 uh, uh, mark for the cutoff point for bad. Then 84.38% of the MIs recorded less than average scores. So, and that means all the MIs fell under the category of poorly designed MILs. So, the discussion now. Um, from the fact that MILs uh, of the, the flesh kinkage scores of this MIL show that more than 80% of the MILs can only be read and understood by people who have a high dig, uh, level of education. It shows that people who are of the average literate uh, level cannot read or understand most of the uh, 
MILs, medicine information leaflets, put in these medicine passages. So they will not be able to use the information properly when they go back home and they need to you know, re uh, refer to the leaflets to understand maybe issues of dosaging, issues of side effects, what to look out for if they, uh, and what they need to look out for and maybe report back to the, uh, the, the pharmacist or uh, to the hospital. So, and the result I agree that with previous studies that most MILs we are reaching at levels far above the average educational levels of readers. And it's not just in Nigeria, it's an issue uh, worldwide. Then on the bout to the MILs scored below the minimum 25 points benchmark, indicating that all of the leaflets were poorly designed. And that shows a serious defect in the design of the leaflets. And you know, when a document is not attractive, a document is not um, encouraging the reader to want to read further, that's a big issue. It's not capturing the attention of the reader. It's a big issue for them to capture all the information in that uh, document. So in conclusion, uh, the readability level uh, of the MILs were not adequate for the majority of readers. As only highly literate individuals can read most of the MILs with ease. Design and the uh, layouts of the MILs were also unacceptable. So uh, we are recommended from this research that the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration, which is the body that controls uh, food and drug regulation in the country, should begin to institute reusability tests for medicines, uh, especially those available as OTC medicines, you know, before awarding approvals to uh, marketers. And also developers of medicine information leaflets, they should consider using the valve assessment to evaluate their design for a more acceptable uh, medicine information leaflets. This is part of the references I used for the literature for the study. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Rachel, for the wonderful presentation on the topic of higher readability levels and uh, suboptimal design of medicine information leaflets in artist art mechanism based combination therapy anti malarial packages a consequence for over the counter medicine use dear participants please raise questions in the chat box so that i can ask uh, mr rachel to answer on it and the poll is also open for ms rachel please poll for mm, mr rachel titus and uh, Mr. Richard Titus, I received one question um, regarding your presentation. Please explain why you use 25 as the cutoff point rather than 16. So I didn't get that. Why you use 25 as the cutoff point rather than 16? Okay, um, the uh, that's, that talks to the bowels. Uh, BKI will flare design assessment tool is a standard tool. And the cutoff for that tool, the benchmark for a good uh, designed medicine information leaflet is 25, not just the average, which is 16. In fact, from that tool, which is a standardized tool, uh, used worldwide for assessing uh, the design of medicine information leaflets, 25 is the benchmark. Okay, so that's why I used it. Okay. I didn't thank you. That, uh, assessment. Thank you so much. And you have another question. I wanted to know in the research where you people able to understand what is the reason for the difference between the senior and the junior level of education in their MIL research. Okay, the um, research was on secondary data that's on the leaflets found in the mess in the past packages of those uh, medicines of the artemisinin uh, based combination therapies. We did not talk with people. There's a part of the research that's uh, been done previously that talked with people, but this one was establishing the readability level and the design of the uh, medicine information leaflets. So we did not talk with people. So it's not uh, a case for whether people understood 
the reason for the difference. So it's we are working only, we worked only on the medicine information leaflets we could get from different pharmacies across the country. Okay. Uh, Ms. Michelle, you have another question. Was there any link between the design of drugs leaflet and the dosaging of anti -malibuals? If there was a link between, I didn't get that. Where was there any link between the design of drug leaflet and the dosaging of anti malarials? Okay, um, we, there was an issue, but that wasn't concerned um, about the design or the readability. Um, at the point where we are discussing or uh, investigating the contents of the leaflets as per what they ought to contain, whether it's complete or not. They, we, had, we saw some issues about those aging that we had inconsistent across the friends, the medicine information leaflets. That was uh, clearly um, you know, obvious from some of the results we found. But in, in terms of um, readability, um, we didn't find that, that that was not an issue for readability. But of course, if if the uh, direction for use of a particular uh, ACT is not clear or is stated rendered in a way that the average person cannot understand, that would be big. That, that's a big issue for the uh, user because they will not be able to medicate properly and safely on that medication. Okay. We have another question in the chat box. So, given that anti malarial drugs are one of the most used medication in our African context as over the counter drugs, what practical recommendations to adapt these drug leaflets to our African educational challenges? Thank you very much. Um, practically, what recommendations we could use um, as stated in one of the recommendations I made is that this leaflet should be designed based on the average level of, the, of education that is acceptable that this has been stipulated for that country. For Nigeria, for example, um, anyone who picks that leaflet who at least has read the ninth to the ninth level as the GSS3 should be able to understand that leaflet. So leaflet designers sh should, uh, while designing the leaflet, make a test. Do people who call GSS, people who are, uh, uh, left school at um, that ninth grade, let them read it and let them see how usable that and comprehensive it is for them. That will give them a pointer to whether they are designing those leaflets higher than the uh, average literacy level that is stipulated for the basic educational level for that country. So that is what they should do before putting out the leaflets with an assumption that everybody understands what they have put out on that leaflet. Thank you, Ms. Rachel. You have another question. What can you say about the use of local language on the leaflet, like some are written either in India or Chinese language? Thank you very much. Um, for India and Chinese languages, um, they will not be useful in the country like Nigeria, but within India and in China, where uh, they have a local language that maybe everybody uses, I am assuming. For China, we know that a, a, the Mandarin is used. It's necessary they put those leaflets in that local language. And also in India, if that uh, is a case where you have a local language that people can use, uh, they should write the leaflet in that local language. It becomes a challenge in Nigeria because Nigeria is a multicultural, multilinguistic country. Um, you cannot. It, it, you cannot start putting all the languages in a leaflet. The major leaflets, uh, Hausa, the major languages are Hausa, Ibu, and Yoruba. But within the Hausa, Ibu, and Yoruba, which are the uh, 
a kind of lingua francas for different regions, there are still differences in those languages. And we also want to discourage a too lengthy uh, medicine information leaflets. So it doesn't uh, just make the person who is going to read like, am I going to read all this? When there are so many languages uh, in the uh, leaflets. So for places where there is a local language that everyone, that people can be illiterate, you know, on, uh, the, it's necessary. It's important that those local languages, are, uh, the leaflets are written in those local languages, especially if there, there's a written structure for that local language and many people are literate in it. So it's important to do that. Okay, thank you so much. And you have another question. Does the regulatory authority has laws, regulations and guidelines on assessment of package insert before a product is approved for market access? Well, that's, those are uh, issues we want to look at uh, later, but for now, um, it is not clear that that is done. What the local um, the regulatory body does is to check about safety and um, other uses of um, I mean, uh, safety majorly. That's the, the major uh, thing that the regulatory body does. About they've not started looking at whether these leaflets are readable or not. And that is why we, rec we recommended that they should start doing so, so that these leaflets are readable and comprehensible by the larger population. Okay, thank you, Ms. Rachel. And we have another question. Do we have further research plans to interact with the users on how they feel about the leaflets? Yes, yes, yes. Further to the study is, um, uh, the plan to interact because with the users. Uh, the reason is uh, we want to be sure that what we found out um, also correlates with what the, the usability of the leaflets by the intended uh, users. So those are um, plans for future studies. Okay, yes. thanks so much, uh, Ms. Rachel. Thanks for your time and have a nice day. Please post your email ID uh, over there in the chat box. If you, if any participants having any queries or concerns, they can contact you directly. You can chat with them. Okay, thank you so much for your time.